Hello and welcome to the Trip Cab. This is the first official CDL podcast. We'll be talking about everything from the serious topics in the CDL to the most absurd imaginable and everything in between. We've got a very, very fun show for you, including some special guests. We have Chef Tony, aka Methods of the Toronto Ultra. He'll be joining us a little bit later on to talk about life behind closed doors and how Toronto Ultra is going on. Special guests, lots of fun clips, and much, much more. This is the Trip Cab. No. comes first every time gonna stand up straight with our hand on our heart gonna right every wrong that we find i'm miles ross and joining me as always is gonna be benson and it's gonna be momo gentlemen how are we doing oh so good so good it's uh Finally, uh, such a great feeling to get the first ever podcast. We've been talking about this for so long. We've had the ideas. Now we're actually get, getting to do it. I mean, yes, obviously it, it sucks a little bit with the current circumstances of the world that we're you know doing content the way we are currently, you know, from our homes. But I miss you guys. Just know that, and it's great to to finally be able to do some cool stuff with you both. Yeah, and just echoing what Ben said, it's good to jump on a call, chat some card, chat some other stuff. Uh, but yeah, I think one th- positive thing is this has probably happened sooner because of the situation. So if that's a positive, I don't know. But excited to get into it and uh, excited for the show. I know it's one thing to have been sort of physically separated thanks to uh, this whole COVID-19 quarantine case. We've, we've, uh, we've all been professionally separated. That this goes without saying. But um, this is going to be a very interesting experience for us, gentlemen. I think while we will be talking serious, COD, at some points in time, I mean, the goal here is more fun. This is more about... You know, the characters, the personalities in the league, the things that we find amusing. And I'm very, very interested to get into that one. But uh, seriously, though, the elephant in the room, coronavirus. This is a very real thing, and we hope you're staying safe wherever you are in the world. Wash your hands, whatever you're doing right now. Give them a wash, why not? 20 seconds, don't forget the fingers. How have you guys been finding this whole experience so far? I mean, Ben, we'll start with you. I, this has been nuts, right? It's it's crazy. Like countries are, are closing airports. Like everything is is so so serious right now. I mean, it's a very real thing. Uh, make sure if you're around elderly people, take it unbelievably serious. Try and stay inside, self quarantine. It seems like a big deal, but a lot of us are gamers anyway. So I guess we're just getting to do what we we do normally, which is just play play video games. But uh, to Miles's point, man, just w- wash your hands. Stay uh, stay as healthy as you possibly can. And I feel like we've been training for this moment our whole lives, right, boys? I mean, <laughs> it's, it's, it's it goes without saying. Phil, I mean, what about you, mate? We were in Vegas briefly together. We had yeah. a good time there, but it was getting a little quiet when I was there. Yeah, I mean, you were uh, you were meant to be staying until we were heading to Dallas, but it, it just kind of got a little bit more serious and more serious. And I think the gaming community especially, we are always online. We're looking on whether it's social media or whatever. So we're kind of clued up on it, but I don't think, you know, the rest of the world is. I think the gaming community are doing great in... You know talking about it and tweeting about it but not everyone else is on the same page so i think that's why it's so important to kind of keep yourself to yourself and yeah. luckily we have video games to play and you know things like this to watch and talk about so uh again it could be a lot worse but it's certainly not fun i've <laughs> i'm missing i'm missing the outdoors even though i'm a pale bring ginger british <laughs> person i miss the sunshine in vegas and it's going to be too hot for me anyway soon and i'm not going to be able to go out so it sucks. Oh, right I, I right will on. say, I will say the weirdest part of this whole thing so far, I don't know if you guys agree or disagree, is the whole toilet paper thing. Now, I don't really get why toilet paper was such a hot commodity because nowhere in, in any of the coronavirus uh, sort of symptoms is excessive pooping a thing. Yet <laughs> people have just been going nuts for toilet roll. Like I've had, I've had a couple of uh, my friends say, oh, if you ever run out of toilet roll, don't worry, I've got you. I'll, I'll ship you some. Like it is nuts. Like I'm not sure about for you guys, but buying groceries, things like that, has been so so difficult. Everyone's kind of panic buying. But but guys, if you if you're you know you listen to this, stop with the toilet roll, okay? It's not it's not gonna run out. Chill. Everyone needs to relax with the panic buying. I was wondering, like, are people eating the toilet paper? Are they frying <laughs> that up and, getting, and cooking it, like. Maybe. What are you doing with it? But maybe, man, when we maybe. first got to LA, when we first got here, the, my wife and I went down the road to Walgreens, walked straight in there, and there was toilet paper everywhere. Like it was something that they had almost more than they wow. needed, which West. was weird. I was like, does, I mean, California's been in a lockdown state before a lot of the other states in the US. Right. Are they just so much more chill now because they've realized that toilet paper doesn't taste as good as they thought? What's the <laughs> deal, man? I, 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 we were kind of lucky as well, like we said, Miles stayed at mine. Before Miles came, I was like, oh, Miles is coming, I should stock up, I should get this, I should get that. And luckily they were on my list. So I, I was quite fortunate because it was just timing for me. And I will say when I've been going to the store on the rare occasions, there's none here. So I was like, luckily for me, it's just me, myself, and 
you know, my toilet. So <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm okay. Miles didn't use up too much of it, so I, I've got a little bit left. Mate, that is the saddest. Um, that is the saddest <laughs> description of like um, what's, me and my what's toilet bonded like? over the past couple of uh, past couple of uh, days and weeks, and who knows, this could be months. That toilet could become your best friend, guys. I don't mean myself. All the my tissue toilet. paper from my toilet. <laughs> Quarantine, Quarantine. With Momo, right there. <laughs> Jesus. Episode Christ. one. God. Oh my god. Yeah. Um, but seriously, though, this is this is a, a global pandemic. We hope you're all taking it seriously, and we are devastated, of course. Yes. And we know a lot of the fans are that we um, have had to cancel and or at least postpone and push back those events. Um, and moving everything to online is going to be a, a big change for a lot of us. Um, it's a big change for for most of us, I think, in terms of the commentary. And we do miss seeing the fans. We're going to miss the live events. It was an experience. And the Cod League was just starting to pick up pace, man. We were starting to get going. Yeah. LA was an amazing event. I, I do want to say, though, I feel like uh, I want to get into our first segment here in the show. There are some that say CDL stands for Conspiracy Dominated Leagues. And now, amongst us, we have a couple of fun conspiracies of our own. But without a shadow of a doubt, the most interesting and bizarre comes from you, Ben. Lads, have you ever seen a baby pigeon? No. No, I actually haven't, no. No. Exactly. So what what, what do you, what do you to... think what do you think people are doing right now? They're changing Baking the batteries in the birds. They are changing the batteries in the birds. Birds are CCTV cameras. People are watching us, okay? We live in the generation, the big brother generation, if you will, where everything is information, everything is is cameras here, there, and everywhere. They're changing the batteries in the birds. Mate. The question for me then is just like who? <laughs> I think that's they, more ridiculous they, than Miles they are. is. They. they are. Yes. I'm more they. interested in like who who they are as opposed to but I mean what do you call a baby pigeon? It's not like a pigeonlet, is it? Like what is a there is an official term Pidgey. for a baby. A pigeon. A pigeon. Yeah. It's a pigeon. It's a Pokemon yeah. Phil. I mean, I just made that up. You guys seem pretty convinced. Pidgey. Though. You said it, you said it with Pidgey. your chest, Phil, so I believe it. But in all honesty, this, this is one of these theories that I've seen uh, throughout kind of the, the, the pandemic right now. And I, <laughs> I read it the first time I left. And then people started like, linking me like serious websites. Like this is a genuine thing that people believe. Yeah. But then I, I, I keep asking myself, I've actually never seen a baby pigeon ever. Like how often do you ever see baby birds? And then obviously people say, well, you know, they're in the nest. Sure, it, it is true. But you would think you would still see a, a smaller ish bird. In my entire life, I don't think I've ever seen a baby pigeon. So now so I'm, starting to, I'm starting to doubt what I believe. I, I, I'm in my own head now. I'm scared. So a baby pigeon is called a squeaker or a squab. And I think, um, you know, in all honesty though, Ben, that's a, that is a, as funny as that one is, I just like the COD community is full of some insane conspiracy theories of its own. Like, remember Killer, Killer's a world champion. <laughs> oh, yes, He's boss. got some gold ones. Like Killer's, yes. uh, he, he thought about red ethernet cables were faster. So at his station, <laughs> he wouldn't have a red ethernet cable. Is that right? Oh. No, yeah, I mean, this is all, colors... It is all hearsay no, for no, me. No, I, I'm late here. No, you're absolutely correct. Uh, the, the colors of your ethernet cable will determine pace and, that was something that really caught up, and I'm not sure if you've seen um, Killer recently. I, first of all, Adam, if you if you happen to find this video or podcast, I love you, bro. Miss you a lot. Obviously, Call of Duty World Champion, so so funny, one of the best entertainers uh, I think in our Call of Duty community. But his recent videos have all been about like weapon charms and and camos and increases. It's like it's like the old like COD Four rumors of like, oh well, Red Tiger is going to give you stopping power, a Blue Tiger is going to give you accuracy. Like it, it's so so funny. He's so so entertaining. I think for Momo and I, we watched that video together where he's sitting there and he gets killed by a guy who's like top blue on Petrograd and he goes, he goes, top blue, Damascus, and then he watches the kill cam and he's like, told you, told you. He gets his notepad and pen out and goes, hang on a second, let me write this down. And then he goes, little charm or something. And then he goes, diamond charm. Damascus. And then it's two games later, he's like, it's Damascus, boys. Damascus has got me again. And it's just some oh, dude man. camping in the top window. And, but, and again, like what Ben said to Echo, like Call of Duty champion, but it had me in tears he's so physically. Funny. He's so funny. And I think part of the reason it is as funny as it is is because part of me thinks he actually believes that. Right. Which, which is like he's buying into his own conspiracy theory. And uh, I mean, the Ethernet one was, was probably the most well-known one throughout Call of Duty. It's depending on what color your Ethernet cable is, depends on the speed that you're going to get to your console. Oh, killer, we miss you. I love that. Phil, have you got any weird conspiracy theories? Um, I didn't actually have any conspiracy theories coming into this. Now I just think it was actually made up by Miles um, purely for the fact that he doesn't want to go to work. He wants to stay at home. I've lived with him for two weeks. He he just wears pajamas 24-7, loves sweet cereal, and I think Miles put this into the world purely so he doesn't have to travel, go everywhere and here, there, and everywhere, so... I mean, Uh, are you you, you implying that because... I am accusing you, Miles... The Ross, 
of everything in because the world I, right now. Because I, I love traveling. I don't have a home because we're enjoying uh, life on the road, mate. Wait, you, yeah, you, that's what you, you tell you everyone. You haven't had a home for, for the <laughs> longest period of time. You, Long period been, of time. You've been drifting from city to city since you moved to America. Yeah, me and the yeah. missus, since last year, we've been we've been on the road. We've been Don't get me wrong. Hotel Tried to go and infiltrate my place, give it to I'm, me. I'm, I'm a little jealous. Out. I'm a little jealous, to be honest, because you have stayed in some fantastic places. You've also, from my understanding, stayed in some not so great places. But that's oh, always going to be the case when you travel, right? But I imagine you've seen some some pretty awesome parts of uh, parts of the U.S. just on your on your traveling ways. Yeah, we were near the airport in Atlanta. Yeah, we were wow. in Columbus, Ohio. You know, I'm hey. anywhere where there are cod events. That's that's pretty much where it is, man. And we've the best one last year with Miami Beach was great fun. We had tons mm. of fun there. That was good. That was really good. All right, that was good. Conspiracy theories out of the way. I'm not going to let that one go. By the way, Philip, I'm going to hold on to the idea that you think I started this so that what I could get a home at the end of it. <laughs> yeah, you just wanted to live with me. You wanted to live with me forever, but your your wife came back and you had to go. I'm sorry. I it's came all... closer. Right, I came close to executing that. We had a good time. Plan. <laughs> we did have a good time. Check the check the vods. We did have a really good time. While on the topic of fun clips and exciting things that happen here in the COD League, of course, we have some of the most incredible personalities and all those shenanigans are found online. So the next segment, the clip of the week, myself, Ben and Momo will find something from the online stratosphere and be bringing you our favorite from that week. Gentlemen, I know you've got your clips, but I think I'm going to start with my own. This one comes uh, from the Dallas Empire. This was an incredible moment in Warzone and what a time to be alive right now, friends, with Warzone and a lot of indoors time we're getting some absolute gems here on the web this one's from Dallas Empire and uh, Crim6 has a little bit of trouble taking care of a player who ends up robbing him wait did he already down him? we oh, did wait <laughs> wait did Crim just get bamboozled? Crim that was daylight robbery wait is he about to rage quit? Crim I thought you had that guy dead to right. Miles, where did you even... How do you this find is, this? This is this amazing. Was, this was straight from the Dallas Empire. It is an incredible moment captured. My favorite part of the vid, it's not just the fact that he gets robbed, it's the fact that he goes to shut off his PlayStation in rage. Right, right, right. That is, that is by far my favorite part of that clip. That's, I mean, that's really. actually incredible. That, We've that's, all been there. That's really funny. He's, he thinks he has a free kill. Dad just jacks his heli in that uh, and leaves. Poor Krim. I just love it. I love it so much. All right, Ben, what have you got? Okay. Now, uh, I actually found something, Miles, that uh, uh, you and me were, were casting some Warzone recently, okay? And we started joking around a little bit about Clay and falling off the map. And for those of you that don't know, it's pretty hard to fall off the map in Warzone. The only way you can really do it is actually falling in the water. Now, Clay didn't necessarily do that, but he did something which, let's be honest, only Clayster could ever find a way of doing. Clay, a legend for falling off the map. An absolute <laughs> legend. Fame. Now, he's landing slap bang in the middle of the map. There's no way he could possibly fall or or die, hasn't used his shoot, and then, uh... Dude. Yeah. What? <laughs> what? what? That is unreal. That has to be the most ridiculous Clay. thing I've seen in, in Warzone. Not only by, like, it being Clay and what happened and dying by fall damage, but the way he got oh, yeah. flung across the map and just like Dude. slammed into the side of a building. It's incredible. His reaction what? says it all. His reaction says everything. Yeah, it's just it's, I don't school like too. I know, man. It's right back in the game. <laughs> I don't think I don't think Clay's ever going to be able to top that one. That's the greatest distance he's ever fallen to his death from as well. I think you know. <laughs> Like, it's never going to get bigger than that, man. Never. I thought for a minute, like, the shoot wasn't going to open, but that was way, God way, way worse. Happened. Right, Momo, the last clip of the week. What have you got? I think you two picked uh, some excellent clips. Mine also comes from Warzone. I know it's a hot topic right now, and everyone's kind of uh, jumping on that bandwagon. But it's actually uh, a little bit of Miles, a little bit of yourself, oh, Mr. Yes. Ross. Um, just to put this into context before we actually watch it, Miles also... Had uh, won his gulag, and I'd like to jump into it just to see exactly what happens. This is great because it's from Miles' point of view. I kind of stitched this together. We were both streaming <gasps> at the time. I was trying to catch him in the helicopter, <laughs> but My Wait. Miles decided to land on top. Didn't press square. Didn't I don't decide. know if this is. I didn't know if this is possible. You're still, still alive. So Wait, no. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to land on the so chopper. So Ben, I just decided to tip him off at that point and let him fall to his death. But uh, as you can see, it was a lot of fun and uh, 
it was honestly one of the one of those nights where you're with your mates and you were just laughing in so much pain That's that your your abs are hurting, your stomach is hurting. Uh, but that was a lot of fun. I think that was one of the last times we uh, we got to play side by side. But uh, it's the amount of things you can do in Warzone is, is mind blowing, and I, some of the comedy <laughs> that comes out of it too. I don't want to say Phil that that might have been your fault, <laughs> but that might have been your fault. Miles was I, I, casually parachuting down. You've You've, you've got the chopper underneath him. You, oh, that's brutal. That was the plan. That oh, was the plan. God. I was like, Miles, you knock, there's people below us. I'll catch you and we'll go somewhere else. It, like, it would have been great as well. But I, I would have had to, because you can't do anything while you're parachuting. So I would have had to like side dive, like full James Bond, GoldenEye style, <laughs> in, down, past the moving vehicle, and then get caught. Like, <laughs> it was never going to work. But the fact that I landed on top was even better, man. I mean, the, the Warzone sandbox has already proven to have so many incredible moments. Like, truly, truly unique, unforgettable moments um I, I just love it i love warzone great timing for this game to come out now oh i've been having a blast i, I know we, we all have we've seen uh, some of our pros as well playing and some of our pros are so good at warzone it's uh it's a little concerning just how good they actually are so now welcoming our first ever guest here on the trip cap we are joined by the one the only the inimitable methods of the tron for zinni welcome to the show mate how you doing I'm good. How are you guys? Glad to be here. I must be pretty special. First guest. <laughs> you are, my friend. You really, special. really are. We're, we're very glad to have you on the show, brother. Um, of course, welcome to uh, welcome to quarantine life. This is what it's going to be like for a little bit longer. How have yep. you found life behind closed doors uh, so far? It's not much different than my everyday life. I mean, practice is the same besides now we're playing from the apartment instead of going to the facility every day. So a little bit of an adjustment there, but obviously we've been doing that uh, our entire career, so nothing too crazy. I'd say the biggest adjustment is probably not being able to work out or go to the gym. They closed our apartment gym, so I'm really a mm. uh, little unhealthy these days, eating too many cookies, a lot of chicken parm. <laughs> uh, I've, I've taken up a hobby in cooking, if you guys have seen it, I'm a chef now. So. What's going on, Chef Tony back for an episode. Today we got Sunday sauce. Oh, yeah, we have. I've we, uh, we paid close attention to that. <laughs> yeah, so I've really, uh, really been doing the same stuff. I guess the biggest adjustments are, yeah, the, the working out stuff and then not being able to go out to restaurants and, and bars on weekends, which I do like maybe twice a month anyway. So uh, <laughs> I would say that's probably the biggest uh, biggest change so far. I mean, that doesn't sound too bad. I mean, how's practice going with everyone being online? Of course, you do have the biggest roster in the league, I think full 10 players. How's that all going? Yeah. Are you making changes? Are you experimenting now a little bit? Also, is everyone in Toronto with you now? Yeah. Or is they, are yeah, they so solo spread? Yeah, so the entire team's in Toronto. We have Toronto Purple and Toronto Black. I guess you can basically say Toronto Purple is the, the starting team that you're going to see in the CDL matches. Uh, as of right now, we're playing with Medals instead of Looney. So it's me, Bantz, Classic, Cami, and Medals. Uh, with the 10-man roster, obviously, we have a lot of different scenarios and options we can run through. We took a lot of time to hammer down on the team we were most comfortable to start with in Minnesota, and obviously since then it's changed quite a bit. We took medals out for Bant, and now we're putting medals in for Looney for the time being. So scrims are pretty much going great so far. I mean, the best that I think they went so far throughout our uh, our team being together right now. And uh, I'm excited for these matches to finally start. I was going to ask you, right, because you kind of alluded a little bit to it right there in the sense of, this is so different, right? It's very rare when you're scrimming in the past, you'd have, you know, another five players kind of looking for a starting spot. Not necessarily saying that it's going to get spiteful or anything along those lines, but do you maybe feel yeah. more pressure to perform better in scrims, just knowing that there are like five, if you want to call them subs, just ready and waiting to go in the background? Oh, there's definitely more pressure. And I mean, I think it's, uh, it's, it, I think it's a good thing. And a bit, I don't know. It's it's <laughs> weird because it sort of lights that fire under you. So like you can't get complacent. You can't fool around and, and goof off and not play and just slack off. So I kind of like that. Um, I wouldn't say more so underperforming in scrims. I, I would say more so there's a little more pressure for the matches. With that being said, I've been playing for professionally for like seven years now. So that's not a something I'm necessarily worried about. Like I'm, I'm confident in my ability and my gameplay. So uh, I, I just try my best every day to make sure the team is uh, firing on all cylinders. I would say <laughs> it's different because you have you have five people who, like you like you said, it, I wouldn't say it's selfish, but I'd be lying if I said it. if I wasn't on the uh, the black team, which is the the not starting team. 
I know for mm-hmm. a fact I'd be sitting there gunning for someone's spot. You know, that's just right. the way right. Right. it is. Because, like, who doesn't want to compete in the big leagues? Who doesn't want to play? So I don't think there's anybody in the world who's going to sit here and say that that's not their goal, just like it would be my goal if I was them. So my goal is to retain my spot. Their, their goal is to take mine. With that being said, we're still one big team. Like, they still help us and, and give us tips and play against us and give us practice. It's not awesome. like there's... Um, turmoil in the in the Toronto camp it's not like that at all it's just so making sure that everybody's on their toes at all times and putting everything that they can put forward into the equation I think it's really cool man I think it's yeah. really really cool that you have such a big roster it's almost like the 13th team in the league that you guys get to exclusively <laughs> scrim like, it's, a, yeah. it's such an interesting idea as well yeah and, yeah. and that a high tide raises all the ships you know the very fact that you're all kind of gunning to keep that spot in the in the primary roster and if you aren't in that spot to get into it man I mean that keeps the competition really really fierce something that I think some other teams especially teams that are winning you feel like they lose that competitive edge once you get to that kind of top spot I feel like none of you guys can slack Ever. I feel like there's yeah, a no, constant we can't. expectation to perform. I like yeah. that, though. I like it. It's kind of like a, you know, traditional sports. Is there's always someone on that subs bench ready to go, you know, fighting and hungry to get on. Uh, I was going to ask, and I've asked this question to Alex of Minnesota, how he kind of transitioned as that kind of one UK player. He wanted to team with, you know, champions and world champions. But you now, with obviously the change with Looney, you're not only kind of teaming with mix of players internationally and different languages and things like that, but you're, I would guess, the most experienced, the maybe vocal leader. How is it teaming with, you know, not four other American players? Yeah, so, I mean, Classic is American, so he's he's right. pretty much on the same boat as me. Veteran, been playing for a while. We have uh, Bance and Cammy, who are both European. Obviously, Bance, proven, proven player. Um Cammy's sort of like a new guy. He was in the pro league last year, but he's uh he's really good. He's he's a good friend of mine now. He's he's hilarious, man. Like I think <laughs> I think the best thing about this ten man roster for me is is the relationships that's kind of brought in because like we have a Danish player, we have some Spanish players, some European players, like there's a mix of everything. And and that's why this world is so cool, right? Like like even with you guys, like we all met through this thing and we've all grown mm-hmm. to be friends and you're from here, he's from here, I'm from here. I think that's probably my favorite thing about this whole thing, and especially our team, is the fact that a team like mine, who on last year, if you said, oh, these players are going to team, you'd be like, oh, there's no way. They don't even know each <laughs> no other. <laughs> and now and now here we are. We have Metals, who, who's Spanish. A lot of people ask if he can right. uh, speak good English, and the, the answer is yes. He's, his English is actually very good. So it's, it's working, man. Like I said, practice has been going great. Obviously, if you look at the league standings, uh, definitely not where we... <laughs> want to be right now Whoa. but with with that being said am, am i going ahead am i am i am i going ahead too much no no no, 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 no this, this is great uh, okay. uh, yeah, uh, okay, for a reason <laughs> yeah so i mean it's uh we're practicing a lot and i think that we're like i said the in the best spot we've been and if you look at the past events and the, and the matches we lost like a 5-6 to chicago last map paris yeah. last map like these games are all close it's not like we're getting blown out of the water and if you look at our roster, a lot of people um, would probably put us in the bottom of the pack more so than they would put us in, in the, the top. So I think we all have something to prove, and we all want to win really badly. We've been working really hard to do so. I guess an interesting question I have, and I'm not sure how much you can even answer this, but yeah. traditionally in Call of Duty esports, when a team has wanted to make a team change, it's come down to the players, right? But when yeah. you have five other players on your roster, you have a 10-man roster, the decision to, to swap out players or, or to maybe even just try something for a week, does that still come kind of from the players or is it management having a say there? How is that working this year with franchising? We have a coaching staff. Obviously, we, we have Marky B. We have an mm-hmm. analyst and uh, our guy named Ryan as well. So we have some good guys there. I would say it's less so the players as as I think it should be. I mean, I think the players should have their opinion and and they can input like, oh, I'm comfortable with this, I'm uncomfortable with this, we can work on this, blah, blah, blah. But I kind of like how, like, especially in my personal opinion in the past, I've been uh, released from teams a couple times when I feel like I've been performing really well. Right. And I think in a team like this, you're not going to see that as often just because you're not going to have those friendship circles and people forcing you out just to keep others safe, which we've seen in the past. So I like it. It, it, It's definitely a a push towards more traditional um, 
just teams in, in general, whether it's sports or, or racing, whatever it is, uh, if, if you're performing, you should be on the team. You know what I mean? At least that's what yeah. I think. As long yeah. as you're not performing well, you're going to be on that roster. Yeah, as, oh. as long as long as you're not getting on every day complaining and attitude problems and whatnot <laughs> and causing issues, that's obviously a different story. But in the past, I've been uh, I've been done wrong. You've been scapegoated. Man. You you've been scapegoated. Yeah, it's worst. okay. You could say it. You could say it. I've been scapegoated, dude. Yeah. It's unreal. Do you have <laughs> never unbelievable. again? Never again. Some, never again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Did you have some really bad luck when it comes to team changes? So let's yeah. talk more about quarantine life. Like as you said, like this is a really normal thing. I said it earlier in the podcast that this is was something we've been training for our whole lives as gamers. But yeah. one thing I wasn't personally prepared for was like not having access to things like barbershops. You know, yeah. I, I've I've made the statement now, man. I'm just going to let this sucker grow, and I'm going <laughs> to get by the end of the league. By the time like August rolls around, I'm going to look like Chewbacca. For you, <laughs> Zin, like. How are you doing so far, man? Obviously, like Chef Tony's now like a, an alter ego for you, bro. But like, are you, are you, what are you doing for hair and beard stuff? Or what are you doing for those everyday things that you took for granted? Look, I'm growing it out. I mean, <laughs> yeah. This is probably the longest. Uh, it's almost the longest I've ever had it. And honestly, I don't plan on shaving it because I kind of want to see what I can do with it because I yes! really never let it grow. I like that. Yes. I kind of, I kind of like it a little bit so far. My hair is. I actually love it at this length, but pretty soon it's gonna get real That's froey. Pretty. Yep. Cause my, yeah, because my hair gets real curly. Honestly, I'm not too worried about it. I'm, uh, Like I said, I'm stuck in saddle type playing video games. I really don't mind my hair being uh, messy. As long as it looks good for the stream, I'll be all right. And <laughs> Chef Tony, you never know. Maybe maybe they like him with some longer hair. But, um, <laughs> I mean, yeah, barbershop. How, how did that all come about? I'm, I'm so curious because... I, I've yeah. known you for such a long time, right? Like, I remember the first time you ever came on uh, one of the old esports reports, right? With, with me and Puckett and, and Mr. X, Jack. Yeah. You're you're so funny. Like, you're probably the funniest, if not definitely one of the funniest players in the entire circuit. But where yeah. did this whole, like, chef thing come from? Like, how, how did you even create this extra persona, if you will? Yeah, I mean, so even even back in the day, like in Ghosts, I used to stream with an Iron Man mask on and have like an Iron Man soundboard. I've always been like really, really into acting. Like growing uh -huh. up, my dream has always been to, to be an actor. Okay. And I I guess I, I kind of took inspiration from Dr. Disrespect because it's like, I want my content to stand out. And mm -hmm. I've always been someone who wants to put out good stuff and not so much quality over quantity for me. Like there are times where I've disappeared in content, which I'm not proud of myself for, but I'm trying to change that now. Um, I love food. I guess that's that's definitely not uh, that's not a secret. Everybody knows how much I like it. So I was just thinking, I was literally just laying in bed one night, I couldn't fall asleep, and I was like, "What can I do that people will like and that I'll enjoy?" Nice. And yeah. I was like, "I love yeah. I love I love food. I love watching like chef videos, even though I never like cook. Like for example, I can watch Ramsey videos all night, <laughs> and I'm always like, <laughs> so I'm, I'm like, why boy. don't I'm like, so why don't I just Dude, I'm not a good cook. I'll let you guys know that right now. I'm horrific. Like my girl, my girlfriend helps me a lot. I'm learning, but it's like I also have that Italian where I, I put on the, I emphasize the accent and I go shirtless with the chest hair. Like I, I just think it, I just think it's a really cool content piece. And you're gonna start. I'm probably gonna start incorporating it into streams too, sort of like Doctor Disrespect. Now I'm not full Chef Tony. I just I have a lot of fun doing it. That, I think it works mean, for my personality. Does that mean we're gonna get cooking streams. I'm not so sure about cooking streams. Oh come it's, on! I mean, I'm definitely interested in cooking streams. I think okay. that would I would need to get a lot of equipment and stuff to do that. I'm, I'm, de <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely fine. not against it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think, you, could, you ever you ever made a bean colada? Oh stop! Why are you bring? Oh up bean shut, yeah! <laughs> you gotta stop tweeting that stuff with the beans like, every day. <laughs> you. Every day he's tweeting stuff with beans. I would love to do right. a segment where, where, where Phil goes to you and you do a, a recipe with beans. I think that'd be fantastic. And then you, you ever make seen it where like you someone brings you in, you're the chef, they bring you ingredients. You just got to make something with it. I'll be the person to bring the ingredients and you can gonna, make what you can just, with it. It's just going to get will be gonna... just It will just be beans. <laughs> but <laughs> see what you got. Just yeah, straight so beans. Chicken, palm, and beans. Imagine. Oh, that's no, disgusting. That's horrible. <laughs> you hit, mate, you're hitting that's, the can after that. That's, even, where that's where his yeah. mom in his toilet after yeah, that one. Yeah, so. that's coming out the wrong way. That's that's not going to be a good one. But, um, yeah, I'm going to get a Food Network show, Phil, and then me and you are going to collab, and we're going to make something with beans. 
Oh yeah, I like it. Jesus. And then, Christ. and then, I'm crying. One day, we're gonna get Gordon Ramsay on the Chef Tony show, and it's gonna be the best collab you'll ever see in your life. Okay. That's I'm that's the goal. That that's the goal. Oh my god. <laughs> this is, this took a real turn. I did not expect there to be so much food talk about this one, but mate, I'm I loving love it. Quarantine, the quarantine life is definitely uh, a surprise for a lot of us. It's not quite what we expected. So, dude, yeah. are you with with the whole quarantine situation? You still go down to the facility. Are you able to go to the facility anymore? Is Toronto in issued like absolute lockdowns on that kind of thing? Like, are you even allowed to get to those positions? So, are you asking if I can go play from there? Yeah, yeah. Could you like for the yeah, squad? No. You know, could you all yeah, go no. down to the, oh, to wow. the play, no, no, play no, facility no. and do it? No. So we're 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 taking it serious here. We're all working from home. We've been tossed across all the teams, whether it's uh, whatever esport it is. All the teams mm -hmm. are on the same thing. So work from home, meaning we're playing from the apartments for now. We're really trying to limit the uh, the social contact because we're in a unique world where we can talk to all of our teammates online. So really, the there's it's not imperative that you meet with them in person. Even VOD review, like you can do that on your computer from from where you are. So. I really don't think it's uh, that big of a deal, but yeah, we're 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 doubling down here. We're really limiting um, exposure, and pretty much the only place I go is I walk the dog, I, I go to the store, and that's legitimately it. I, I don't do much else than that. Dude, you're a you're an Good. icon and a role model. You're a role <laughs> yeah. model for all of us. You know, I've, yeah. I got one more question. I got one more question. Go Who, go at the end of all this quarantine, do you think will from the league will look the funniest coming out of like the quarantine cave? <laughs> Who's gonna be like oh, the TJ most Halley. dramatic? Yeah. TJ, TJ Halley is going to look disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> but but Slasher too. Uh, Slasher sent me a selfie last night. He's not looking good. So I think <laughs> I think one of them two are going to be in a, a rough spot. With that being said though, like there's a lot of people who haven't been turning their cams on. Like there are players who are hide they're hiding from us. So I would like to see a challenge at the end of this where like every player posts a picture and then we can all just gang up on whoever looks the grossest. <laughs> <laughs> it won't be. It, it won't be me. Look at this beautiful. I, I'm liking it. Yeah. Okay. okay. For, for How's that going, going, brother? Then? I, 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 one quick question before we kind of let you go. You, uh, you obviously mentioned a little bit how the team has been uh, and in terms of quarantine life. How's actually the city of Toronto? What, what's it like uh, living there throughout all of this? Because I'll tell you right now, LA is ridiculous. Like there's yeah. like nothing on the on the shelves whenever I try and get groceries. It's, yeah. it's almost like there's no one in LA. It's ridiculous. There's no traffic, for example. What's Toronto like? Yeah, so I'm from New Jersey. So one thing I've noticed in a time like this is people in Canada are a lot nicer and a, <laughs> a lot more respectful when it comes to like okay. the actual rules and limiting this. Like, for example, I saw I saw tweets of people in Florida at the beach and stuff. Like, that that wouldn't happen here. I think everybody's pretty serious. I went to the bank today, actually. Forgot to mention that, so I went to the bank today. And they were limiting the amount of people who can go in. And if you were, and you got to say six feet apart from the person yep. in front of you, it's a, uh, it's serious. But I think it's necessary for something like this because obviously we want to put an end to it and mm -hmm. get back to normal living as quick as possible. When it comes to the city pre-quarantine life, I'm loving it. Good, good food. Pretty much all I need is is good food. <laughs> and then uh, I went to the in center. Sorry, my Siri just started talking. Let me shut that off. But uh. I'm loving it so far. It, it's definitely, it's pretty much America. It, it's hard to, it's not like I'm in the UK or Italy or something. It's, it's pretty much America, but not America. Does that make sense? It's yeah, yeah. not much different. It's a familiar culture, man. No, it's a familiar yeah. culture. We love it. Well, Zinni, thank you so much for being on the show, brother. We really appreciate it. Uh, anything thank you, you guys. Say to the fans, what should the fans be cooking tonight for dinner from Chef Tony? I'm making rigatoni bolognese tonight. You're going to see that in the next episode. So I'm not sure when this comes out, but rigatoni bolognese will be a Chef Tony episode. Like that. And uh, like, yeah, I like, uh, like how that sounds. Toronto fans, I appreciate your support. We're going to turn this around. I know it doesn't uh, look good on paper, but I promise you we're better than you think we are. Mate, we love that. Thank you so much for joining us, dude. All right. Thank you, guys. Finally, this segment we are calling For Shame, where each week we look at one element of the Call of Duty League community that we have found either embarrassing, ridiculous, or downright shameful, and we all get to ring our bells and scream for shame. Gentlemen, are you ready? Oh, I am Born I've ready. been ready for this. <laughs> ben, this is, I feel it's like your favorite bit. This is, this is <laughs> literally the moments I live for. Well, for this week's uh, For Shame, um, 
I'm gonna call this one out. It's gotta be the Seattle Surge and their TikTok videos. Their character select TikTok videos where like they pan around like Octane and Karma and Slack and like they give them like little descriptions about what mm -hmm. these characters are. If you were to like pick them in some sort of weird budget RPG, it feels more like a khaki mobile game, you know, like a really bad one. And I just, I just, when I watched it for the first time, I was just like, oh my God, what is actually happening, man? I watched it like two or three times. There's like music and everything. And the, the thing that got me the most though is like Octane at one point, he kind of awkwardly looks down at the camera like, are we still doing this? I respect the effort, but Miles, I'll, I'll agree with you there. That's pretty, pretty shameful. Could be better, right? Could be better. For shame, for shame. For Phil, shame. do you have any thoughts? I, I agree. When I first th saw it, I thought it was a bit of a joke when I saw not what was happening in the video, but the little pop-ups and descriptions of what was happening. I, I saw like turret or human turret or something. And don't get me wrong, we call him that, but it was just the way it was put across. I thought it was hilarious. I thought it was comedy at the point, but I think it was meant to be serious. I thought it was meant to be like, you know, some type of content. It was different. I'll put it down to that. Different. Yeah, this is the thing with TikTok, man, and I'm going to sound like the boomer here, and that's oh, fine, but like, there's something about TikTok, dude, I don't know, I just don't, I'm not quite on board yet, I'm not quite on board yet, what? don't get me wrong, Priest is killing it, I think Skies and his girlfriend, they're uh -huh. killing it as well, I'm loving every now and then just to see that crop up on my timeline, but... Were you, were you a Vine was, guy or no? Were you, were you not Vine really, the man, mm. not really, I, I mean, but I could still sit to this day and watch like a nine and a half hour long Vine compilation video on YouTube. Okay, right, okay. right. That makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. Some of those were comedy. I still, I still do that today. I'm gonna be honest <laughs> with you. There's, so the old vines, the classics are, oof, they're fantastic. We've had my full shame moment. Uh, what has really got your goat this week? I don't think I have a shame bell big enough. Okay, for for the person I'm about to shame. And Miles, I'm gonna apologize to you first because this is someone you're very close to, a dear friend of yours, a dear friend of mine, actually. Phil, what the hell is going on on your Twitter? First of all, I don't know how many of you guys uh, have seen <laughs> Phil's, Phil's Bean tweets, okay? They're out of control. They, they need to stop. I thought when Miles went to Vegas, he was going to sabotage the whole Bean operation that Phil has going on, but he didn't. If you didn't see Phil's recent Bean tweet, it is outrageous. Ran out of alcohol at home, so decided to make a beena colada. Okay, it's right? baked whoa, beans. Whoa, wait, what's the problem? It's, first of all, well, what's the problem? First of all, it's baked beans, not even in like a proper yeah. cocktail glass. It's this weird glass that someone happened to find with a sausage sticking out and an umbrella in the sausage. Bill, this obsession you have with baked beans has to go, okay? Because I, me, I'm starting to get a tweet saying, oh yeah, you're, you're English, you know, Phil's English, you must love baked beans. You ever try a baked bean sandwich or uh, just random things? People keep messaging me. Like, I, I, I'm, imagine I'm gonna have a bean colada tweet coming my way soon because of your obsession with this. It's unhealthy, Phil, you need to stop. For shame, Phil, for shame. I, Ben, you sound like you need a bean. I think you need just a couple <laughs> beans. I think, honestly, one thing I will say is it started back in London. When we were in CDL London, um, and everyone was, all the Americans were kind of talking about the breakfast, as they always do. Natural. It was actually, funnily enough, Miles, who kind of started tweeting about it, and he was, you know, triggering a few people. And I saw people kind of, you know, get frustrated in the response on social media. So I just started Googling away, finding the most ridiculous pictures you could do. Did I make a pina colada? No. Is that my glass? No. I'm but did people get very worry. upset? Absolutely. I'm However, to worry you might though. Then you think about it, right? It would. Is it that bad? I mean, yes. have you tried no, it? No, no, it ain't that bad, man. That's oh, a lot stop. of fiber. That's so, a lot of fiber. Wait. Protein. My, Miles, don't, don't you keep going. dare. Keep don't going, you dare turn. Don't the you sauce, dare a delicious turn. tomato base. You got them on the you, can't these, you can't get these beans in Go America. This is what I field. miss. This is Go all that we are. This is three British people in one podcast, and we're slandering big beans. I'm, I'm out. <laughs> this, is a, this is my first and last podcast show. I cannot deal with, this, <laughs> with you two. Dude. So to come to conclusion, we've all come to conclusion, baked beans and bean coladas are fantastic, baked right? Baked beans, fantastic, bean coladas, not in a million yes. years. So I'd I love to try it. That's what I'm going to put on TikTok. And that's what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm making bean, oh, bean talk. So what? Yeah. I'm a he calls well. queen bean, you know, Phil, and just... Oh. Queen this Bean, and it could just be you eating beans in different places. Hey man, th that was originally, it was, a, it was a story from Ricky Hatton, I think the boxer, Ricky the Hitman Hatton, he's a retired British boxer, who did actually drink Tell me the didn't. Bean Colada. No, yeah, he 100% no, did. did. If yeah, yeah, I yeah. had access to them, I would be doing it on stream, I'd be. Do I'd have you know one what, right Phil? now. You know what, Phil? Bet. 
bet. Oh, That's no. going to be the next content piece that we all do when we're together. You know what? For the next podcast, how about this? How about we get a bean colada made and we'll watch you drink it on podcast? That's what there we're going to do. That's what I we're going to do. It. Episode two, folks, you're not going to want to miss this because Phil's going to drink okay. a bean colada. I like the idea. We're going to call it, Phil, how have you been? And it's you with a different <laughs> bean-related meal every single week. I love week. it. I, I love, love it. it. Fantastic. For shame, Phil. For shame. Hey, that was brutal. Support this. <laughs> Fully support it. Mate, you're going to be tooting like a maniac. What do they call them in a... <laughs> they, I think it's in... I think it's Minnesota. They call them whistleberries. <laughs> whistleberries? <laughs> I mean, it might you, be you can tell this Does guy's it? traveled. This guy oh, was mate. in Minnesota Man for like three weeks mouth. before of us. There, there was somewhere in the States we were calling Whistleberries. I just love that one. Anyway, Phil, what is your for shame this week? Oh, where do I start? There's there's many things. I don't think we've seen uh, some of the, the COD content to shame. I think Ben was trying to well, trying to highlight you know what to shame at this point, and he selfishly picked myself. I am going <laughs> to go back to a very serious comment uh, and topic in the coronavirus. This COVID-19... Mm. I want to shame it with more than a bell. I want to shame it with beans. I want to put beans all over it. No, I I just think it's such a shame that we've lost the events. We're losing so much in seeing each other, going outside, whatever, whatever it may be. But I think it's important as well to kind of try and make something out of this awful situation because things like this we can still jump on a podcast we can still try and cast some call of duty or whatever it may be play some warzone together um we will not let this thing get us down we will not let it win but i shame coronavirus to the utmost and maximum that is possible i love that phil you've like really that spun that well there is something about staying at home so much now and the time we're spending, whether it's on podcasts or... I mean, I've, I'm downloading new apps to be able to talk to my family in different ways other than just, like, traditional messaging and things like that. And, you know, it's really... I'm enjoying seeing all your home workout stuff. I have cooked more home-cooked meals in the last right. week and a half than I think I have in the entire year since being on the road, which has been super, super Damn. cool. And I'm getting through a lot of Netflix. I'm getting through a ton of television right now I'm, and also warzone it seriously can you imagine mm. if we didn't have warzone to play right now how imagine I, imagine be, i never I'd, completed I'd a battle someone. pass so quick Dude, it'd honestly be it'd be, it'd we be leveled the worst up. time in the world <laughs> phil and i maxed out our battle pass in like three days <laughs> same <laughs> <laughs> and now i've done all i've done all the warzone challenges i'm like give me something extra so yeah. i believe there's some updates and uh hopefully more stuff to do yeah, the updates came out very, very recently. So we got new weapons. Uh, there's a change to the box cast and all sorts of stuff. I mean, right now, I'm honestly looking at my watch and I'm kind of like, hey, as much fun as it is working and spending time with you lot, the truth of the matter is I would much rather be playing Warzone with you at the same time. What if, let's talk to the producers and see if we can just do all this while gaming at the same time. Like that. I love it. Who's like with me? That. I'm with you. I'm with you, Miles. For shame, producers of CDL <laughs> content. We could be playing Warzone right now. Right, boys, let's think uh, about predictions. I want to talk about, in our final segment here on the show, uh, who benefited the most in the time off since the Los Angeles home series? Ben, we will start with you. Hmm. Um, I'm going to say it's going to be the the teams who have fantastic infrastructure. Uh, and what I mean by that is the, the good coaching staff, uh, the good places where players can go and play safely if they're going to use that. Obviously, you're, you heard there from methods that Toronto have completely locked it down. They're just going to play from home, but they're still able to do all the other things that you expect them to do, such as, uh, you know, VOD review, for example. So for me, I, I look at the teams with fantastic uh, backroom staff, if you will. Um, but I think it's also important you look at teams based on location as well. I think that's going to help a, a, a lot. I, I look at, of course, Dallas for, for me is going to be a team who I think are going to come out and prove so, so much um, again due to both factors. And the Huntsman as well, the Chicago Huntsman are also not too far away from Dallas, I believe. Mm. Are they in Houston? Where was their, where's that all based? What is, I want to say Houston. I want to say Houston. They might also be in a very might similar situation. Chicago? Huh? Anyway, I think that's <laughs> going to be uh, that's going to be an interesting one to look at. Uh, Phil, what about you, mate? Uh, I think Ben raises a lot of good points, I think, to, to kind of get out of the way. I think Dallas is going to be in a great position. They brought, obviously, Rambo on. I think he'll have, a, have had more time to work with the team. You know, yep. two of the young guns, I think. We've seen them play online um, and, and have success. I think the very start of this game, we saw these guys winning tournament after tournament. Uh, but I don't want to make it all about Dallas. I think they will be just fine. I think they'll be a great online team. Um, but honestly, I think it's the teams which... 
again, you might not think of. I think, like, New York, they weren't having the best of times on LAN. And I think this kind of time off uh, gives them a little bit more time to, to play, to scrim, to get better, and to make the adjustments that they want. I know everyone's eager to see the likes of Sensor join the squad or whatever they do with the team. But I think just the amount of time that it's been will help them and, and maybe other teams as well. But... Dallas, the obvious one. I'm excited to see what the likes of New York and other teams do, though, with this downtime. I think Phil just made a great point, right? Like, you look at all the teams that have been struggling. Mm. Any amount of extended time, right, between games and competitive games is going to be a benefit, whether it's finding out what is going to be the best starting roster, whether it's just catching up in terms of game knowledge. Maybe you're just a little further behind, or, or maybe, as we know all too well, sometimes individual players just take them a little bit longer to get into the swing of things. Any extended period of time for the teams at the bottom of the table struggling, it's going to be great for. I predict a massive change to the teams who I think we're not putting in uh, kind of central locations. I think Florida might have a little bit of a tough time. We joked about it at the start of the show, but mm -hmm. way, way, way on that far side of the coast, well, that east coast, who knows, man? Who knows? It could be a good thing for them. could be a blessing in disguise. Maybe they'll have to move. I don't know how you can move currently with the travel bans <laughs> and whatnot being issued. Uh, although I'm getting emails from everyone right now, as I'm sure you all are, about like how companies are handling this quarantine, how companies are implementing you know, this six-foot distancing thing. And uh, a lot yep. of airlines are like, well, we're just not giving anyone middle seats anymore. And if anything, that's a win. That's it's a, a great win time for everyone. Travel. Yeah. Yes, it is. No more middle seats. That's a big dub. That's a big dub. Although I, I have seen a lot of pictures uh, from uh, you know a couple of people who have been unlucky enough to have to travel uh, due to work currently, and airports are just empty. There's just yeah. there's just like no one there. There's a, a picture circulating around on Twitter of um, uh, it was like a basically a, a plane parking lot, if you will, where it's just parked planes because they they just don't need them right now. There's just That's no wild. demand for travel, uh, and it's just uh, football fields full of planes. Just so many planes just sat doing absolutely nothing because no one wants to travel right now and rightfully so why would you it's that weird man i was thinking about this though when i left you in vegas field to come here to los angeles my yeah. flight was full there wasn't well, a I, single I think, available that, seat that was at the kind of start in a bit where everyone was almost kind of panicking if we've got to get back somewhere and i think vegas where i live is a place where people may have visited and just mm. thought we're getting out <laughs> we're getting out of here yeah so I, I mean i will say just kind of off topic I drove through Strip of Las Vegas, and I, I, I thought I was in The Walking Dead or a zombie film or something like that. I was like, it was like 3 p.m. on a Thursday, and I was like, where is everybody? And wow. it's it's kind of wild, but it's good to see. You know, you don't want to see. I've seen crazy things of people still going out and still doing all these things. So it's nice that it's empty. It's a positive thing. Yeah, man. I mean, it's, you want people to take this seriously. Yeah, they're all at yeah. home playing Warzone. We've got 30 million plus users <laughs> right now. It's amazing. That's what, it's free, baby. Every platform. We love that. True. Well, true. I, think, uh, I think we can call that our predictions, friends. I think we can put a button in it. Right. Well, fellas, to wrap up the show, it's now time for Miles' Mailbag. And it is exactly <laughs> what it sounds like. Each week, we will be receiving questions from you, our lovely viewers and listeners, and answering the most interesting, funny, strange, bizarre, and enticing ones. Uh, we've got one here from Mike Gaynor. And Momo, this one is for you, my friend. So oh. the f yeah, this right. one, buckle yourself in, brother. Dear Momo, your bina colada made me throw up in my mouth a little bit. <laughs> That got me thinking, what's the grossest thing you've ever eaten? Oh, okay. So I was... A bina um, colada, of course. No. So fun fact, never had a bina colada. I would love one. I would. I really, really would. Grossest thing I've ever actually eaten, I was in the Philippines. And they it's quite traditional food there. But it was obviously so bizarre. It was like pig intestines. It was something called baloo. Which is Baloo, like yeah, a, yeah. I think you know what it is, Miles. I, I, I always do. forget. What what is it exactly? So Baloo is uh, it's a it's uh, like an embryo. It's a, yeah, so, but it's it's a it's a bird egg. I think it's a chicken egg or a duck egg that they've, right. let, the, they've let it get to a point where it's basically a bird. So as you can see, I still bird. don't huh? know what it is. Uh, yeah, what? that one. But, yeah. but but it was like a tradition. And I was over there. I was doing some something to do with esports at the time. I was like, you know what? I'm probably not coming back to the Philippines for quite a while. So I tried it. So. Um, yeah, Baloo is definitely the disgusting God. or worst thing I've eaten. It didn't taste great either. I'll be honest. It wasn't my favorite. Woohoo! Ben, you eat anything disgusting? That just made me, like, almost vomit <laughs> a little bit in my mouth. I've I bet it tastes not... great, but you've got to get past the fact that it's got a face, you know? Yeah. No, let's, let's, no. Absolutely, no. No, 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 no. Um, for me, it's actually Vegemite. 
Which is oh, nowhere near. Oh, come on. No, yeah, that, no that's disgusting. Is extreme. No, that is horrible. Extreme is Phil. Vegemite is disgusting. I don't care about the fact that you lived in Australia for a little bit, Miles. It's disgusting. Mate, do you like, that, do you like Marmite? No. no. Oh, you're no. both pathetic people. No, you are just, you're crazy. Weak. You are a crazy person. But, Why would but you have Vegemite? Marmite? Is, oh, ooh, Vegemite I is way worse Marmite. than Marmite. No, Vegemite like, is worse than Marmite. Come on, you, even you have to admit that. No, I think Marmite's stronger than Vegemite. I think, think? it's way more powerful, yeah, because Vegemite's a little drier, so Vegemite's a, it's, Vegemite's a vegetable extract, whereas Marmite's a yeast extract. Uh, Marmite's what do you, the one... What do you put it on, toast? You put it on toast, a little bit of butter, because no, it's very you, strong. Oh, oh, I'd rather have beans. Beans on toast. Beans, oh, beans on Marmite. Marmite. Phil? Oh, no, don't next. you dare question. put them in the... Next question, next question. Um, I've eaten cow brain. That's the roughest thing I've ever eaten. It wasn't great. This one comes from Andrew Vanette, and young Andrew writes, Hey guys, with the switch to all online, what bottom tier team in the standings can you see making a run to the top half? Basically, Ooh. who is your dark horse team that will benefit hmm. from the online switch the most? Oh. Phil, let's give this one to Phil. Yeah, first. I'm going to jump in on this one. I am going to say, especially after the interview, Toronto. I think <laughs> Toronto is a team which has good facilities. I think they've got... Uh, obviously a huge roster which they can use and kind of abuse at this point and i think they're going to be kind of fighting for their position i think they're a team which will do well uh online and i can see them climbing the ranks so i'm gonna go with toronto all right mate. ben what about you optic gaming la this is a squad who i mean they're just gonna get better they're gonna get better anyway doesn't matter if it was online or online we saw that in la i think but uh, th this is a team who I imagine they're getting their they're they're getting the the fiber installed right now. If they don't already have it. Let's just say that. Uh, I, I thought they were fun. getting so much better in LA. They were, they were. such they a strong team. They were good. And uh, the cool thing was, before every event, they've been told. Everyone's been saying online that they're actually looking so much stronger in scrim. So this could be exactly. the turnaround for Optic. Yep, it really could. Really, really yeah. could. We'd love to see that. I'll go with Optic as well. I'll take that one. The next question comes in from H Hogan. Uh, Dear Miles, WrestleMania is on the horizon, which has got me thinking. <laughs> Which player would make the best WWE wrestler? This isn't all about physicality and who could suplex Ooh. who. They would need to be able to cut a killer promo, get the crowd going, etc. Who's coming off the top rope to dominate the rest of the league? Yours sincerely, H. Hogan. Right, Hulk. I honestly think, uh, given what we've seen quite recently, I think Crim Six would be quite yeah. a good oh, WWE you stole wrestler. stole my answer. You stole, stole my, answer. my answer. Dude, it was all so of our good. answers. <laughs> He'd be so good. I can imagine see the hype video coming into it. Oh. Dude. Dude, it'd be like Krim it'd be like be all those slow-mo shots of him looking down he's like this is my city and then like you know he'd be grabbing the microphone he'd be like you better watch out brother because of Dallas Empire we're coming for you it'd be it'd be great I think he'd be the best at it uh, and I think he's got a really good like supporting yeah. cast in the rest of the crew as well Illy's basically the Undertaker now already uh, right. Shotzi you could put like a you could put a lot like a mask or something on Shotzi he's quite small he could be very dangerous so I can see him high flying a lot and Clayster Clayster's like He's ringside, right? He's like the manager or something. He's in a suit the whole time or in a bikini. I don't know, whatever you want to go for. I mean, th that whole roster, I think, has got a lot of potential because they're all quite smart. They're all good entertainers uh, and they've all got a lot going for them as players as well, which is real fun. So that, Hulk Hogan, is my answer. Thank you so much for writing in. <laughs> Are you got anyone else, boys? I, I, I think I, what's you funny is my answer. You we, we all had Crim. Answer. We all had Crim. Dude, and I think I that's see, the answer. I could see Crim suplexing someone. I could see that. I could, I could see that. Like, just I think I could also ringside pinning for the, a three. Yeah, there's something about Krim as well. I can also see Krim in like the kind of shin high boots and knee pads and just like the <laughs> spandex underwear. He's got this kind of like Steve Austin vibe going on. You know, I think Krim could do go. it. I think he look good. I think it'd be good. I, I like agree. that. Phil, have you got anyone else? Oh, it's a, it's a tough one. I think it is kind of funny that we all instinctively went for Krim six. <laughs> um, but I, I don't know. I think. Who would be good in a wrestling hey, Zinni match? Zinni would be good. Zinni would be good. I think Zinni would be funny, but I don't know if that's the that's the question. You know what? A little bit off topic or curveball, should I say? Seeing uh, the villain that is Lacefield, and I know that like Ooh, his yo. his current situation with the gorillas and stuff, but Lacefield when he's been like up against the crowd and like cheering, like the villain of the fight, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think he would get that crowd going. Uh, Dude, you want to talk about They're villains? Pretty rowdy. What about what about Patty P? Aches Imagine that. The greatest. It'd be Aches. A great villain. Aches versus Krim. Oh. You, 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 oh, you hear Aches? It's like theme music come through. It's just the crowd. Boo! Oh, that'd be awesome. That'd be we amazing. need more theme music in the in the we CBL. Do. We, we do. do. 
We thought about so this at the start a little bit. It'd be way, it'd be fantastic if every team had their own theme music. You know, ah, oh, dude, the potential. Now that we're online, surely somebody can render like a small stadium, fill it full of like little YouTube users, and then we can have like fireworks, indoor fireworks, smoke machines going off. Uh, and like a full WWE vibe. I'm getting carried away now. Right. I think we should just probably end the show. Well, I think uh, on that note, gentlemen, uh, I appreciate your time. This has been the trip cap. Don't forget, we'll be doing this once a week. We're having lots of fun answering your questions, basically ranting and spitting and gurgling all over the things that we don't like and dislike and finding the funniest clips we possibly can. Ben, anything to say before we part ways? No, uh, honestly, it's been fun. Uh, fantastic first episode. It was great to have Methods on. Look forward to, to some of the guests. And if any of you guys have questions, feel free. Let us know. Write to us. Tweet at us. Leave comments anywhere and everywhere. Um, we'll answer your questions next episode. Momo, anything to say to the glorious fans before we close our browsers? Yeah, I mean, Phil Miles' mailbag right to the top. Drop the comments like uh, Ben said. And I'm interested to see some you know fun ones again i'm just really excited again the the clips that we showed how kind of funny and creative you guys can be and again the last thing i will say stay safe yes. wash your hands beat coronavirus and just sit at home watch stuff like this and uh it will all blow over i promise you eventually maybe i don't know they will indeed well from myself and ben and of course phil and everyone here at the cdl producing content online for you at home we'll see you guys next time no.